This is the reflection lab. I've got this labeled as part one, but we're going to be doing uh, some investigations with mirrors right now. The lighting's kind of low so we can see these rays. This is our uh, ray box. See, there's a nice bright. We've got a, we've got a comb-like uh, device. It's a filter. So we've got these three rays, and on the sheet, uh, the lab sheet, one, two, three, four different reflections off of different kinds of mirrors. So we've got a flat mirror, we're going to lay it on here. And we can see that the rays are going to bounce right off of there. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace these paths. Um, trying to trace them freehand looks kind of sloppy. So I've started three rays here already. And what I'm going to do now, oh I've also got a uh, lens here. So we're going to put this lens in place. Uh, this is the lens right here, and it's got, we haven't talked about lenses yet, but this is uh, what's called a concave lens. It's a double concave lens. It's concave on this side, concave on that side. We're going to put this here, and this will spread the light rays out a little bit. You let me take the mirror out. You can see that it spreads the light rays out. Send it to the mirror. I'm going to scooch this up just a, a hair. There we go. I've already got the lens traced on your paper, and so now what we're going to do is identify with just some pencil marks. Use a nice sharp pencil for this or a, a mechanical pencil with a nice fine point. We're going to indicate where the rays are coming out with just a little hash mark. Not a dot so much. Use like a little line and then where they're striking the mirror. Right in the middle because the ray starts to spread out um, when it does that and then where it leaves the box out over here. So this is one of them that leaves, this is one that leaves. If you feel like you need to, you can number it. And this is one that leaves over here. And then when we've done that, we will remove the parts. And I'll get some more light on here. And then we'll use a ruler to sketch the path. So we, our first hash mark is right here. And so we will draw a line to here. By the way, also continue that straight line to where it hits the lens. And then notice that it doesn't exit at exactly the same place. It actually bends a little bit. So we're going to draw the line, taking a slight bend on the inside. And then what I'd like you to do, uh, so we'll do that with more when we have more lights on. But, uh, well, let me introduce it right now. Uh, with a protractor, I'd like you to figure out the normal. Remember the normal line from our earlier topics on vectors and forces and things like that is the line that is perpendicular, in this case, to the mirror. And so we want to draw a 90 degree line. I should probably do this with the lights on, but I'm gonna, and do, let's just do this as a dotted line, and, which, is, which is a common thing to do with the normal line. And then what I'd like you to do is measure this angle coming in, it's called the angle of incidence, and then this angle leaving, it's called the angle of reflection, and, uh, and see how they compare. We're going to do that analysis. Pick one and then do the angle of incidence and angle of reflection measurement relative to the normal. Alright, let's do it for uh, these other mirrors quickly, and uh, because you can't do this live and in person, uh, you are going to duplicate this as best you can. Keep my paper nice and straight also. This is our mirror right here. It's a piece of plastic that has a mirrored finish to it on both sides. So when we use the inside of the curvature, it's a concave mirror. When we use the outside, it's a convex mirror. And so we're using this as a concave mirror because we're reflecting to the inside. I've got it lined up with the already drawn curve right there. These rays are already coming in, so all I need to do is hold this down firmly and draw a few pencil marks where it's hitting the mirror. And this time, um, it, uh, they're, all, they're, they're all kind of bouncing here. You could also draw a little hash mark representing the ray as it bounces back. And, and then we can draw the lines that represent what happened there. Take some time and do this carefully.
And so this point where they all cross close to that dot right there, that's the, the focal point of this particular mirror. We can talk about some additional aspects of this. If you are within, if you are inside the focal point looking at one of these mirrors, um, what do you see? And if you are outside of the focal point looking at one of these mirrors, what do you see? Take a look at, uh, you know, the, the rays that are bouncing off and how they behave. And maybe you can make a prediction. All right, let's do the next one. Let's go ahead and do the concave mirror right below this one. And here's the one we just used. Can you see that? It's blurry, but you can see. Here's the one we're going to use now, okay? More curvature to it. All right, so get the ray box lined up. All right, I'm holding it down firmly, putting some pencil marks down. All right, let's draw some lines real quick. Well, you know what to do with that. Um, you can draw the lines on that. Let's do the uh, convex mirror. The convex mirror is the outside of the curvature of this guy. Where'd that thing go? It's dark in here. All right, get the rays lined up. And get the mirror in place. This side of the mirror doesn't seem to have the same quality as the other side. I don't think it has the smoothness that the inside. See, the inside rays are a little bit more crisp. And the outside, uh, not so much. So, that's all right. We can get the gist of it. So we lay that down, there we go. So it is intersecting here, here, and here. And this ray diverges, just pick the middle of this splash of light. And then, uh, then we can draw the rays on this as well. Well, you know what to do with that. So I'll leave that, uh, for you guys to do. Okay, there we go. So uh, you'll end up with four images here that show the individual rays. A lot of times uh, the convention is to show the rays with arrows at the at the top. You know, sometimes that clutters it up, but if you want to if you want to do that, you can add some of those at the end of your diagrams. And these two I'll let you finish kind of on your own.